Hey, everybody. I believe we're live. And I'm Laura Eisenhower. I have the most special guest, uh, dear friend and incredible uh, person um, who I've gotten to know over uh, the course of many years, John D'Souza, former FBI agent. And we're not talking like any kind of FBI agent. We're talking the real X-Files kind of agent. And he's written a ton of books. Uh, he's just bringing truth forward and uh, helping people to learn how to be their own like investigator so that they can get to the bottom of the madness that's going on in the world right now. And he has so much to share with us tonight. And as you see with the title that we chose, these two topics are something that we're going to hone in on. So first of all, I wanna thank you so much, John, for being with me tonight. Oh, thank you, Laura. It is great to be here with you today. I am so happy to be on with you. Um, like, I, like I have said in the past, uh, being with you is like trying to learn to ride a wild pony and just you got to just hold on and get the best out of it and just work with it the best you can. And it's awesome because we get we get great stuff out of you. And uh, the other reason why I love being with you is because uh, these people do not recognize enough the spiritual aspects and the cosmic aspects behind these sometimes political uh, uh, issues. Oh, at least we think they're political, like uh, like Ukraine, but they're really not. They're really not. They're really um, largely spiritual and cosmic uh, because we are in a war. We are in a global cosmic war. And so that's why it's especially good to be with somebody like you during this time uh, where you're, you and your audience and your audience have a special understanding of these spiritual and cosmic aspects of these things that we see in the materium. We see them in the materium and we think, oh, this is just a physical reality. And it's not, it's absolutely not. So yeah, that's why I love being with you, Laura. Oh gosh, right. And uh, I just have to say, uh, we've gone on many adventures together. We climbed the Great Wall of China together. We, uh, oh man, uh, I, I wish I could just give a little collage of like some of the pictures of, and, and some of the, the wildness of all that. And just, you know, just over the years, just when all these kind of different events take place, like the psyops or the false flags or like the, the narratives that are being steered and the things that we're dealing with on a world stage level, here we are with a, uh, you know, the Ukraine Russia thing and uh, possibility of a fake alien invasion. And, um, you know, you talk about the cabal depends on reverberations from these genocide attempts. Mm -hmm. um, like, kind of take us into like the here and now and what's being steered in the here and now and what they're depending upon from us. Okay. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you this way. Uh, the uh, Stephen King wrote a, a great book many years ago called The Stand. And it was basically, uh, it was basically a book uh, concerning when the worst catastrophes in the world happened. And it was based on a lot of real research and real events. And one of the things that it showed was something that I call, that uh, everyone calls reverberations, reverberations. And all that is, is when someone is, when a group is trying to genocide a civilization, one of the things that they depend on is and they depend on the ubiquitous tragedy, the ubiquitous tragedy that they create and they then ho foist upon the civilization. They foist it upon humanity. They have a lot of direct kills, a lot of direct kills where they wipe out large portions of the hum of humanity. But then what they expect is what we call uh, reverberations, uh, which is just the secondary effects of a major catastrophe that causes huge death, uh, very largely in um, in, in um, something that uh, Trump has actually mentioned, uh, causes large numbers of suicides and violent responses from people that you would never that culminating in completely uh, annihilating violent responses from people that would never be violent otherwise, but they've been driven to the edge, they've gone over the edge and they just have some conclusory, terrible, violent events and a lot of self-harm, a lot of suicides. That's been, that's been happening in our society as a result of lockdowns, uh, uh, ice, uh, distancing, uh, uh, wearing, uh, wearing masks and isolating even our children. 
even isolating the children. And there's been a lot of that. The cabal depends on that to happen because they factor in certain percentages of the population that will self-terminate and uh, self-terminate through reverberations, through those secondary effects of their disasters. So that's a, that's a big thing that is actually going on now. And we need to be aware of it. We need to know about these things because what happens is when these catastrophes are looming, when they're coming, uh, whether you're talking about uh, the nuclear war that they're trying to get going right now, or uh, whether you're talking about a, um, a, a, a fake uh, condition that is sent around uh, with, this, uh, with this fake medicine. I, I'm trying to talk in, in uh, uh, covered terms here. Uh, when you sign get, language. Yes, when you get the uh, thing, uh, they are expecting and hoping for those secondary effects to terminate a certain percentage of the population after the fact, like, you know, roughly like four to five percent of the population. And those are huge numbers. Those are huge numbers, especially when you're talking about children, which are involved in this, too. So that's what reverberations is. And the cabal depends on it happening. And so we need to have this is what we need to do to protect ourselves against reverberations is we need to have a little some historical background <clears throat> on these events, historical backgrounds and spiritual protection, spiritual protection, uh, because when these things happen, we need to be in a position where we can uh, defend ourselves spiritually with knowledge, with understanding and with and that's why we do these things mental and spiritual protection so that these people will be okay uh, when they when these catastrophes happen. They won't do what, uh, what we've seen in the last two years. They won't freeze and then just go and say, okay, I'm depending on the government to save me. What, what should I do? No, that's, that's the exact wrong thing to do. And that is why uh, historical and spiritual protection matters so much when you have when you have the historical knowledge of where these events come from then you're able to come rely on something within yourself and you're able to say okay wait i know what this is like i know what this is i know where it comes from uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of these events from the uh from the cabal uh come directly and i i, I don't know if i can say nazis but <laughs> they come directly from the Nazi movement uh, in 1932 in Germany, because a lot of the members of the cabal, the, uh, they are approaching 100 years old right now. And they were actually there. They were there when these things were being done by the Nazis that worked so well. And so they're trying to use them again because they were there. They know what happened. Um, people like Soros, people like uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, they were aware of what was going on, and they were physically present when it happened. And, and so they're trying to use these these uh, these events and these methods again and again. Uh, and we see it clearly in what's going on now and what's happening now with this nuclear war they're trying to get going. Right, and they hide behind different labels. It's like they morph into like a master of disguises. It's like, and that's why it can trick people. Uh, the people that. Uh, kind of fall for it, think that they are progressive or they're like mm -hmm. anti that sort of past history of the Nazis when really the same people are behind um, these movements that are steering the propaganda and the social engineering because they really mastered like Mengele and like, you know, the scientists and doctors uh, through Project Paperclip that really, you know, mastered this whole like MK Ultra sort of like psychological profiling of like how to really groom and indoctrinate generations to fall for the stuff that they're throwing at us. So it's a multi kind of like level um, extermination. Like you said, like the, the tactics that they're using make people want to just like give up. But Absolutely. at the same time, the ones that are complying are being led to slaughter. And at the same time, the ones that are trying to uh, shed some truth and light Oh, they're considered like the political opposition and they're being called racist or, you know, and it's just like, it couldn't be like more crazy. Like everything, like history repeating itself and all the tactics of like 
pushing the buttons, the right buttons to make us relive historical trauma is all coming to a head. Yes. And uh, so where, 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 where do we go from here then? Just to just like laugh and just hug each other and just be like, this is just <laughs> let, let it all go. And like, and like realize that like, finally, maybe we could have a breakthrough and realize how much we're being played, you know? Yeah, I love that quote. Uh, I'm going to put that in neon again, Laura, another one of your quotes, um, pushing our buttons to force us to relive historical trauma. That is fantastic because that is exactly what they're doing. But there's another aspect that you just mentioned that I wanted to go into as well, is that we have a lot of different individuals. And this this pertains especially also to um, uh, David Rodriguez, um, because he has a, lots of people that he follows. And uh, what I wanted to say for that crowd as well is that we have a lot of people in these uh, in this area who are all trying to ring the bells and tell people what's really going on. And one of the things that happens a lot is that people will say about one individual, well, this person is saying X, Y, Z, and therefore that contradicts uh, what you're saying. And so therefore uh, what you're saying can't be true or what they're saying can't be true. Well, I'm here to tell people as an investigator that all of that is bullshit because it's not true. When you're dealing with a global war that is going on, what happens is both sides have many layers of plans that are always going forward. Some of them are getting shut down sometimes and they immediately go to the next one, next one, the next one. And the same, and it's true for the white hat militaries of the world, uh, which I think we're, we're up to about 35 nations militaries that are in this white hat, white hat alliance movement. And, um, and also on the cabal side, the same thing is happening. They have a constant steady stream of, of, plans on the drawing board that are being checked off. And some of these plans are on the walls of United States senators' offices. Okay, I just want to mention that real quick because that'll make them crazy. That How do I know that? Okay, but so they have many of these uh, plans on the drawing boards that they are sharing with each other. And, and a lot of times these things are being shot down. So, and here's the thing, because we have all these layers of plans, uh, sometimes a good way for people to remember things is through sayings. Uh, Oscar, Oscar Wilde said, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. Well, all this means is people are looking for consistency in things where they don't apply. It doesn't apply. It shouldn't be there. And yes, if I say something's going to happen, uh, we can have another individual saying, oh, no, that that happened already. And it was shot down. And the Alliance and the Pleiadians uh, took that away. And now it's no longer it's no longer a factor. It's gone. Um, and that can be true. That could be true. But what I'm saying is also true because we are dealing with layers and layers and layers of plans. That's what's happening here. And that's why it's important to mention that because people don't see the truth of that as we go forward in these areas. And uh, that's why um, we need to look at with certainty at these areas like Ukraine, uh, like uh, fake alien invasion and things like that. Very important. Oh, and I want to just say to everybody, we are going to be recording a deeper, uh, more uh, in-depth version of this interview on a censorship-free channel. And I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating for me as well. And we're all a little frustrated, right? <laughs> that, oh, we've got to go somewhere else. And maybe we have to like pay a subscription and, you know, and, and I know I, I don't like it either. And I don't feel like subscribing to anything. But we have so much to dig into that we can't really share on this platform, uh, especially when it comes to what's going on currently uh, with the bioweapon labs and uh, at least, uh, you know, 20 throughout the Ukraine being destroyed by uh, white hat Putin. Uh, maybe I, that's just a seed I'm dropping as far as what we're going to dig into when we do the second part of this interview that we can air on a safer platform. But um, so, I mean, it, look, when you say layer upon layer, I mean, it's, it, it's like, you know, 
just this narrative and if that falls apart well we we got this card to play and this card to play and it's like if plan a b c d e f g doesn't work they they just never stop it's like starting from like i mean it's been throughout human history but like you know just to bring it to like something we can all relate to things like kennedy assassination 9 11 and like all these different events that shake the foundation of uh our humanity that are huge game changers that result in what do we do in yeah. the face of it? Do we follow the narrative? Do we look at these leaders that are going to come and save the day when they're the ones that are responsible for it? I mean, some of them are. I mean, let me uh, tell you uh, something that just happened tonight. I was just advised uh, and I've had contacts from all of uh, the uh, sources that I have in the national security. And one of the things that just happened, uh, I think it was last night, uh, is that uh, Fox News has dismissed uh, this uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor. And uh, it may be overruled later, but for now, he's been dismissed. And the interview I'm talking about has been scrubbed. I was trying to send you the link uh, to add to this interview. But apparently, yesterday, uh, Colonel McGregor, who was a, an advisor to Fox News. Okay, Fox News is owned and operated by the same people who own and operate CNN. Okay, in case people don't know that. But what occurred was that uh, he was being questioned by another individual. Uh, and so the uh, other individual was always, as always, trying to pump up what a threat uh, Russia and Putin is, and that, uh, and they were actually trying to pump up that uh, Putin was going to was going to continue this war and against Ukraine, and that he was going to expand it and move on to conquer the other countries uh, to the west of uh, of Ukraine, including Poland, that he would be marching on. Poland, okay? Now, anyone who is of a certain age will uh, know, who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? They're gonna be uh, marching into Poland, all right? And so they were trying to create the analogy with, with Adolf Hitler. That's what they were trying to do. Instead, <laughs> Colonel McGregor went completely off script. And what he said was, hey, I'm sorry to tell you, but the whole war with Ukraine is over already. It's done. Uh, Putin destroyed the targets that he wanted to destroy, which uh, those of us who are awake and aware, uh, a lot of us know, it's the, uh, the underground weapon uh, bio labs, bioweapon labs, <clears throat> that Ukraine has approximately 20 of them all across, uh, all across, I believe, eastern Ukraine. Uh, and they're, they're all over the place and they're underground and Putin was destroying those targets. Okay, now what Colonel McGregor went on Fox News yesterday and said, and again, he's been pretty reliable for them, he's, but this is the first time, so it makes me believe he's a white hat plant over at Fox News. And what he said was, uh, he said, guys, I'm sorry to tell you, but this war is over. Uh, Putin has destroyed the targets he wanted to destroy uh, and his army has uh, the uh, Ukrainian military circled, circled completely in Kiev, in Kiev. And they have surrendered to him because if they didn't, they would be destroyed by tonight. They would have been destroyed by tonight. They weren't, so that means they surrendered. And Zelensky is in talks with Putin right now, right now. He said that yesterday. That basically means that they, the Ukrainians have surrendered at this point. Uh, so as soon as he, as soon as he started saying that, the Fox News host tried. Well, he did. He cut him off. He cut him off, and they got him off the air. And now I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to find that interview somewhere, and it appears to have been scrubbed uh, from um, the uh, the databases that we usually use uh, to find those things. Uh, so it looks like he has uh, he has done that. He was completely. I mean, he just busted out with this, uh, with no indication. So it makes me believe that he was a white hat plant over there at, at Fox News. Uh, it's incredible that he did this. Uh, and uh, we're, we're gonna see if he's correct. We're not gonna get it from mainstream news, uh, but 
we're going to eventually find out if everything that he just said is correct. And I believe it is. I believe it is. So that means uh, we're facing basically uh, the ending of this um, military plan. But again, the cabal is desperate for this nuclear war. They need it. They need it because if they're not, if they don't get it, then all of, a lot of their people are going to be prosecuted uh, in the Nuremberg trials that are coming up. They don't want that. They want the distraction. Uh, they want that to not happen. Uh, and they've actually uh, assured their allies that this will not happen. They will not be held accountable. Uh, you know, maybe the pharmaceuticals will, uh, because it's looking like the pharmaceuticals are uh, are uh, selling their stock and getting out of town. Uh, so, so it looks like it's too late for them. Uh, but for everybody else that cooperated with this this uh, uh, pandemic, we can say, uh, and they're they're all going to be. Uh, they're going to be in great, great trouble and uh, because we cannot walk away from that because now Ukraine has exposed, and this was the other thing, Ukraine has exposed uh, what they were going to do uh, for the next phase of this pandemic, what they were going to do. They were going to, they were going to use these labs, these bioweapons labs, by the way, which are, again, I can't believe I'm saying this. We're going to go real deep in the censorship free yes, platform you're right. about all that. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Let's, let's hold on to that. You're right. Uh, because that is, I mean, that is crazy, super deep stuff. Um, so yes. Uh, so what's happening on a, on a broader, on a much broader spectrum is that there are members of the cabal that are, are starting to get concerned that they're not gonna get this nuclear war that they need so desperately. I mean, people don't understand how desperately they need this. They're basically, their lives are depending on this, on this happening. That's why they've been trying to get this nuclear war going since when the evil queen was running for, uh, was running for president. They were trying to get it done back then. And now they need it even more, even more than before. Uh, plus, um, and, and so for them to uh, say, uh, that uh, this is uh, this is over or it's gone. It's really not because it's just continuing into the next step of what their plans are that they're going to be pushing forward. And the great and the great plan is I was given I was given the name tonight, uh, and it's something I've been talking about for a while. It is the uh, it is the uh, fake alien invasion, but you have to know English grammar to know what what is meant by this. The uh, word fake applies only to the word alien. It does not apply to invasion. Okay, so it's a, yeah, it's a little tricky to understand because a lot of people look at it and say, "Oh, it's going to be fake alien invasion." Not this going to. It's going to be holograms. It's going to be just holograms, pretty holograms in the sky. But no, 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 it's not. Absolutely not. It's going to be the in um, the alien identity is fake. That's the only fake part is that there really are not going to be any aliens involved with this. Uh, they're going to say they are, and they're going to advise that they are. But uh, apparently, this operation is going to be a global, broad, a broad uh, alien uh, invasion. It's going to be a, such a broad operation. It's going to include all the assets, all of the assets of the, um, of the cabal, uh, all the assets that we've seen previously, all put together towards this purpose and it is going to be called it is going to be called tentatively they are calling it operation failsafe operation failsafe okay which brings forward uh, again the cabal loves that name because it relates directly to all the purposes uh, operation failsafe is the final final failsafe uh, if you look up the definition the definition of a failsafe, uh, it fits perfectly into this situation. It means the final net, the final safety measure that they have uh, to collect all power, to collect all resources and power uh, against us. Uh, and it's the final, final step, Operation Failsafe. It's the, probably the most appropriate name for this. Uh, and it will be a uh, fake alien invasion. It has a lot of different aspects. Uh, that I will get into in the uh, in the next hour, 
Uh, it has three major aspects that will affect every single one of our lives. Uh, and it's going to be really crazy. Uh, and it'll affect some more than others, but it's going to affect everybody. Whoa, right? Right. So, yeah, we're going to move on to part two in just a little bit. But when you uh, bring in the spiritual component, just no. to share a few words about that what, yeah that's yeah. the reason that i the reason that i share this stuff is because i want people to survive i want people to be alive and healthy and happy and i want them to get through this and, and the problem is as i've as i've said to many people in the past uh it just when this happens when this comes forward uh, it's not going to be a lot of pretty holograms in the sky that you can take or leave. It's not going to be like that. Think of 9-11. Uh, 9-11, uh, when it occurred, uh, was a solid reality. It was, it was, and I would argue also in, included holograms at another level, at another level of technology that we don't understand. Holograms that had solidity to them, that had sound, that had a lot of things that we don't understand holograms can have. And so that was present. That was present with that. But this is going to be, like I, like I always say, it's going to be 9-11 uh, times 1,000. It's going to be the attempted destruction of our cities. And that's where we're going to be with that. That's going to be real. There's going to be nothing fake about it. And so what happens is people have, uh, the cabal understands that you have to attack people on a spiritual and mental level. You have to attack them on a spiritual and mental level. You have to exhaust them. You have to wear them out. You have to make them depressed. You have to make them sad. Uh, and you have to keep on pushing that element because if you can do the end, if you can load them with fear, it's like Frank Herbert said, fear is the mind killer. Fear is the ultimate mind killer. The material doesn't matter if they can just keep pushing it and they can create this, this wide ranging panic as we've just seen in the, last, in the last two years. If they can create this extraordinary panic, this extraordinary fear, then what happens is eventually it kills, if a person is not awake and aware, it kills the spirit. It kills the spirit. It, uh, it depresses the spirit, it depresses the mind, it kills the spirit. And then nobody can save them. Once, once that is pushed beyond a certain point, nothing we do can save them. No amount of knowledge, no amount of caring, caring. Like you and I, Laura, I know that we care about people. And that's why we try to save them. We try to step forward. We try to say, hey. But, but once the cabal pushes them past a certain point with the spiritual issue, uh, then uh, there's nothing that we can do. I mean, I've... Um, I've personally uh, saved people sometimes at times, uh, and then uh, because their spirit was so damaged, so pushed so far, they went right back. They went right back and basically uh, just um, did self harm, did self harm, and um, that was it. So that's why the spiritual aspect of these things, we're trying to arm people with knowledge, with history, with understanding, so that when they see these things, they won't just go into a panic like normies usually do. And that's just a fact. Normies usually just go into a blind panic and then they, uh, they tend to uh, just rely on the sources that are trying to destroy them, that are trying to destroy them. And, and that's a loop of self-destruction. That's so a loop. A, a panic demic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, a panic demic. And that's very important to the cabal because they know about that. They know about that. They remember, the cabal remembers when they found out that they could just have uh, uh, two Nazi officers march into a major, major town uh, back in 1935, 36. They could have just two officers and a, a, an artillery sergeant uh, march into a major town and just through fear, just through fear, just by executing a few people, uh, and then saying, okay, we're here now, when there was just three of them. There was just three of them. There are documented cases of just two Nazi officers and one artillery soldier marching into a major town and then having them all surrender to them, take them over completely. 
and then have them all spying on each other. Well, the cabal remembers this. The cabal was right there when it was happening. So that's what they're, that's why they know that this panic demic does work. They've seen it. They've seen it with very little resources. They can put very little resources, whether these uh, little resources are just a couple of soldiers, a couple of officers, or just a, a few, a few uh, medical doctors or scientists that are bought and paid for, and they can use them to take over an entire town and fill them all with fear and make them all fall into line because panic works better than anything. Yeah, problem, reaction, solution that uh, here, here's the solution, but you know, it's, 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 it's appeasing that fear, but it's enslaving the individual in the process. Uh, and, 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 and it's so tricky in the way yeah. it goes about it. So um, yeah, I mean, let's wrap this segment up and we're gonna go deeper in uh, our next round for uh, Conscious Vitality, uh, which will air, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the date, uh, probably mid-March on a Thursday night. And John Souza and I are going to dig way deeper into these topics. And uh, we will uh, rejoin you there, right? I don't think we've been an hour yet, though, have we? No, we we don't need need to stop yet. So so so, what oh. what what? You so want to share? Yes, yeah, kind of here's one thing. I, one thing I wanted to share uh, when it comes to fake alien invasion, uh, which I absolutely believe is coming, no matter what we do. I believe it's coming, and there's many members of the cabal that believe it's coming too. Uh, because they believe they're going to fail on this nuclear war issue. And, and so that's why they are pushing forward uh, projects, uh, project fail safe. Uh, and they, um, and I'll talk about that more in the next hour, but uh, one of the major links in this is the way to say, to know that this is going to be fake if you can live through the panic, uh, through the panic period of the initial panic period of this, uh, which we, we will, because we're gonna be aware of what's going on, is that you've got, the fake only applies to alien. If you, can, if you can show that the aliens in this are not real, they're not really there, uh, then you're gonna conquer the entire area. And this can be done uh, by the knowledge that aliens are not physical, that's why I always urge people to please get my book, The Extra Dimensionals. The Extra Dimensionals, please, that is the absolute proof that aliens are not physical. They exist on the same spectrum as, as ghosts and demons and angels. They are from other dimensions of reality. They cannot maintain physicality here. They just can't. And so when you see that fake alien invasion happening, uh, it's there are not going to be uh, any aliens involved. That's why the cabal is so intent for us to maintain the doctrine of alien imminency, alien imminency, imminency, like what we saw at Roswell, that aliens are physical. They are physical. Well, no, that was a trick. Those were composed bodies. Those were composed hybrid bodies. They were not real uh, aliens at that point. And again, people, you need to see the, uh, the actual evidence of, uh, and I, that's why I always urge people, please read my book, The Extra Dimensionals, which provides all the proof that aliens are not physical. They're real. They absolutely are real. But, and they are existing at the top of these pyramids uh, in reptilian form. Uh, and um, Cliff High tells me that they're, they're in ex insectozoid form. He calls them the bug at the top of the Cabal Pyramid. And they are advising, they are counseling, they are helping to get things together for the cabal. Uh, and yeah, they exist, but they're not going to be involved in this in this invasion at all. And so that's why people have to do that. And then other than that, what I, what I wanted to mention was the seven words. The seven words. Guys, this is very important because this is happening all over the world. I just, I follow, I follow only very few individuals. Uh, one, a couple of guys I follow uh, is uh, David Icke and Cliff High. 
Uh, I follow David Icke and Cliff High. Um, I doubt David Icke for global events and Cliff High for things happening in the United States. Uh, and here is here's something. This is very important. It's the first time I've ever seen. It's the first time I've ever seen uh, the two of them say almost the exact same thing, almost in the exact same week. And it was this. They talked about the seven words. Apparently, there are individuals that are, ta are telling them who are receiving messages. And this has to do with my book, The Clear Hearers. The Clear Hearers, which is so, so important. Uh, they both said seven words are being circulated all over the world with voice to skull technology that is being used. And the seven words are, um, the seven words are, take the, it'll be fine. That's it. Those are the seven words. And the people who are receiving this, uh, you know, a lot of them don't recognize that this is voice to skull technology. They don't, the scalar waves, they don't know anything about that. So they think maybe this is a real message from like God or from the angels or something. And so they're taking the, the you know, and, uh, and so they're all getting these seven words. And I've never seen such a large group of people, diverse people from different countries, from different places, all getting the same seven words. Guys, if you just get my book, The Clear Hearers, I go into, I predicted this was going to happen. Uh, I predicted this was going to happen in my book, The Clear Hearers, and I go through voice to skull technology, how dangerous it is, how it's been used by governments and by the cabal, not just the cabal, but by governments have also used it. And it is going to get worse and worse. And if you don't develop the spiritual discernment, the spiritual discernment to know when something is not genuine, it is not from God, it is not from your higher self. It is from something else. And so we have to recognize when these artificial messages are sent to us. And so that's why I urge people for their own development, for their own discernment, to read my book, The Clear Hearers. The Clear Hearers, which explains all of this from A to Z so that we can be ready for when this fakery is put upon us. That was it. <laughs> and we're going to put all the links uh, in the description, and we're going to go a, a lot deeper in this next uh, segment. But, um, you know, as far as, you know, we know they're real, but at the same time, it, it kind of brings me back to, like, invasion of the body snatchers, right? It's like, yeah. once a person knows they're being messed with and they yes. break that program, do you yes. feel that those weapons and those things that have been put into a person's body the minute they kind of awaken to like the game being played it can nullify the it doesn't, it doesn't aspects of it or it doesn't nullify but it actually it's the game is one i mean the moment you are able to discern that something is artificially being put into your mind into your head or, or into your into your body you then have the ability to recognize it and reject it reject it spiritually and physically that's that's all you need that's all you need because then you can go and get help from the genuine clear hearing sources which is your higher self your cosmic self that stands in the breath of god that is so important because when you get that alliance when you get that force working for you wow It'll open up your powers and abilities. It'll open up so many things for you that you'll be able to then have a protection at a level that you never dreamed of before. So that's that's what the discernment is what matters, and the practice. Totally, and 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 it's not a doom or gloom thing. No matter what one has been faced with, it can be corrected. It can be healed, and that's you and I both. Uh, you know, know so many people that have been through the MK Ultra programs, um, yeah. have had everything done to them under the sun. But when they realize and gain the knowledge uh, and, and find that sovereignty, they were able to transmute yeah. all the weapons used on them to make them a weapon yeah. towards others. Oh, they to turn it around because our consciousness yeah. is way more powerful than whatever we might have like 
done. So if people are like, oh, you know, I, I, I did get that. But, you know, as long as you have the knowledge, you can erase the ramifications as long as you can break free from the mind yes. control part of it. Yes. right? Absolutely. And that's important to uh, keep telling people because we can't just uh, give up on the people who have taken the, the thing. Uh, we can't give up on them. We have to keep tell them that you have to keep you have to make that spiritual decision, that discernment. You have to say, OK, what I and the problem is so many people are not willing to do that. They're not willing to do that. So but there's a few who can who do. And so what happens is in inside of your body, this is also a spiritual war inside of your body. So if you can just make the decision, make the decision to say, OK, what I did was wrong. I went and I took, you know, one or two of these things, uh, these things. And um, but now I know what I did was wrong. I'm not I'm going to fight against it. I'm going to not spread it. I'm going to govern the sovereignty of my body. Uh, then what happens is they can get into these uh, detoxifying programs. There are so many of them out there. Uh, we have we have great, uh, great groups um, like uh, there's one in um and uh, the frontline doctors, of course, as we all know, frontlinedoctors.org, I believe they are. Uh, and they have all kinds of programs uh, to detoxify the body. Uh, but I believe that stuff works at a spiritual level, too, if you'll allow it to. Because this is also this is also a spiritual attack on your body's blood, uh, on your body's blood. So people need to recognize that. They need to feel that. They need to make those decisions because you make those mental decisions, it affects the spiritual decisions as well. So we got to do that. We got to help these people, and we need to make them understand that even if they made a mistake, um, you know, we still love them. We still love them, and we can still help them to come back from that mistake. Boom! Right there. <laughs> That's just awesome. All right, so uh, maybe we'll wrap this up and go to part two. All right, I'm holding on to the pony. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't, <laughs> don't even get me started. All right, thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. I'll put all the links in the, dis the, uh, the description. And uh, John, I'll see you in a couple minutes. All right, see you then. I'm ready. All right, all right. thank you guys. Bye.